Hello everyone. Today there's a discussion about the second part of the tropical cyclone that is origin of tropical cyclone. Uh, in the previous discussion we made analysis of the conditions that lead to the tropical cyclone. Now today we are looking at the origin part of the tropical cyclone. So let's start. See the origin of tropical cyclone if we consider the previous conditions that we have already mentioned let's let's consider a sea surface which is stable calm and has a temperature of around 25 to 27 degrees celsius atmospheric pressure is stable that is insulation is strong so the heating process takes place along with a very high rate of evaporation. So what happens in this case, air masses get lighter, expand and rise upwards. So there's an expansion of air and vertical movement of an air mass with increase in temperature. So as we know that if air mass rises up, it begins to expand atmospheric pressure reduces now to understand what is this atmospheric pressure and why we are writing this as low pressure zone we should consider we should understand that there is this normal atmospheric pressure or we call it as average atmospheric pressure equal to 1013 millibars it's decimal point 1013.13 millibars. So approximately this is the atmospheric pressure. Anything more than this is considered as higher pressure. Anything less than that is called as a low pressure zone. Now as the atmospheric pressure begins to decrease, the, uh, the, the atmospheric pressure reduces to around say 1000 millibars or it reduces to around 95 millibars. At its very initial stage, it is referred as depression. It is referred as an atmospheric depression. It's very relative, relative to the surrounding atmospheric pressure. So as uh, pressure is reducing, call is depression. At this stage, you can see the air masses converging towards uh, to, towards a central region or where the atmospheric pressure is low. You see the wind speed slightly increasing. If conditions remain static, if conditions remain same and the temperature further increases, this depression is referred as disturbance, atmospheric disturbance. The wind speed slightly increases. Now, if the pressure further decreases to approximately around 980 millibars or less than that, now this is termed as a cyclone. So there is no standard definition of cyclone by, by calling by, by def defining it as 980 millibars is called a cyclone. A general reference that if the, the atmospheric pressure reduces by 980 millibars. Uh, you can see that atmospheric pressure is very very low and winds converging towards this region with a low pressure conditions so they constantly rise up so if atmospheric pressure is reducing to 980 millibars or further less than that say 970 960 950 millibars that means it's a very strong low pressure zone very intense low pressure zone to do as, as a layman we can understand it has it's a vacuum like condition and we know that air gets attracted by this vacuum so does this atmospheric low pressure zone it attracts the wind from the relatively high pressure zone and here it rises up now that is an interesting point that we must relate here So I'll just draw the isobaric map here. Suppose this is a zone where atmospheric pressure earlier was around 
thousand millibars or so. If you go outside this, then atmospheric pressure reduces to around one thousand milli, uh, sorry, increases to around thousand ten millibars. But as the heating process continues, you will see these isobars, that is lines joining places with equal atmospheric pressure, they get narrower and narrower, they get closely spaced. So you have another isobars now, suppose 990 millibars, then again the temp temperature increases or atmospheric pressure further reduces, so now you have 980 millibars or maybe less than that, I'm just setting up 980. So it can further reduce. Now at this stage, what should be the direction of air? All of us know that air moves from high pressure to low pressure zone. It moves from high pressure to low pressure. So if we can relate this, from this outer zone of atmosphere, air is moving towards the central zone where the atmospheric pressure is low. The central zone here I am referring to the low pressure region which is basically that one region of air by atmosphere where the temperature has, is very high and there is vertical movement of air, upward movement of air. So you can see a kind of centripetal pattern of air moving towards the central region. If you bring Coriolis force here and suppose this is taking place in northern hemisphere and wind direction is this way, suppose it's moving towards northeast, deflection will be slightly towards right of its direction. The wind will get deflected slightly right of its direction and try to relate at this point, Coriolis force acting upon these fast moving winds and it gets deflected towards right of its direction, so a swell is produced. A circular movement of air is produced with low pressure at the center and observe this cyclones are anti-clockwise in northern hemisphere. If it was a southern hemisphere deflection would have been towards left of the moving wind so it would have been clockwise. So remember this I'll write here A N C. In, in, in northern hemisphere cyclones are anti-clockwise and anti-cyclones would be clockwise. So go we'll like this anti-cyclones in northern hemisphere are clockwise, cyclones in northern hemisphere are anti-clockwise and in southern hemisphere it's the reverse that happens. It is by the influence of Coriolis force. I said earlier, Coriolis force we'll be discussing probably in the next video. How does Coriolis force act and the effect of Coriolis force. So, now let's come back to this low pressure zone. So, you can see, you can observe now a swell is produced. A swell is produced. That is, winds begin to circulate and with an upward movement of air, with a constant upward movement of air. So, continuous upward movement of air. Now, if you have seen smoke rising from a chimney, you can see a dense cloud of smoke being formed in the upper part of the chimney. So, if the air is rising up and creating a low pressure zone in the lowermost part of the cyclone, there should be a higher pressure in the upper part of the cyclone. Now, this, there is one important point, a lot of people get confused with this. Understand that this high pressure is not higher than the low pressure at the surface. This high pressure is higher than its surrounding at a given altitude. So, when I am writing high pressure, it is in comparison to its surrounding. Suppose it is formed at 9 km above uh, in the atmosphere, so high pressure at 9 km surrounding. Not, not in, in comparison to the lower part. Lower part it is higher, it, it is always a low pressure zone. 
So the higher pressure that is formed, the, in, uh, the, the high pressure condition that is formed in the upper part of the cyclone is in comparison to its surrounding air masses. So let's start the process now. Let, let's continue this. Air masses rising up. We know that there's a lot of moisture that these air masses carry with, with them. We know that a lot of moisture being formed. So this will carry, so this will lead to intense precipitation. This will lead to huge rainfall in the adjoining areas of the tropical cyclone. Now, another point that we need to understand, please focus upon these two points. Number one, we have not shown any rainfall at the center of the cyclone. It's called as eye of the cyclone, which is characterized with clear sky. There is no, there's no rainfall at the center of the cyclone, at the eye of the cyclone, because, now focus upon this, because, see if you can see high pressure here, that means the density of air is very high. So it throws air in all the possible directions. So it th throws air in, it deviates air in literal position, literal direction, away from the side pressure. Because of this, some of the air also subsides. So it's like air mass is rising up. But because continuous high pressure is being formed and intense high pressure is being formed, there will be literal movement of the air and also subsidence of air takes place. Now, subsidence of air. The subsidence of air causes clear skies. In a discussion on precipitation, We'll understand why and how a rising air mass can cause rainfall, whereas subsiding air masses bring stable or clear sky conditions. So the eye of the cyclone will never have a rainfall. It will be clear sky conditions. I hope it is clear. So this is one point that I wanted all of you to focus is because high pressure conditions, subsiding air masses, clear skies. So center of the cyclone devoid of any rainfall. But there is rainfall in the surrounding areas. Now the second point that is needed, that needs to be concentrated. For that, let us, let us take an example here. Suppose this is any cloud. It contains a lot of vapors. In other words, these vapors possess the latent heat of evaporation. Previous discussion, we said that when we touch this uh, water vapors, they're always warm. If you see steaming water, when you touch this vapor, they're warm because they possess this latent heat, called as latent heat of evaporation. When they rise up, air masses, uh, rather vapors, vapors condense. And we know condensation is exactly the reverse process of evaporation. So, the heat that is possessed by vapors gets released, which is referred as the latent heat of condensation. Now, this is, remember that, this is released, this is absorbed. Released. That is, this is absorbed. So, latent heat of evaporation that has been absorbed by the water vapors, right? And now when they rise up, they condense, they release that heat, which is called as latent heat of condensation. Now, one factual information to, to sum up all this. One gram of water vapor, remember, one gram of water vapor releases approximately 600 calories of heat. One gram of water vapor releases 600 calories of heat. That means so much of water vapor that is present in, in, in a cyclone. So many, so much of water vapors. So the heat must get released because there's a lot of condensation that takes place. 
So if the condensation is taking place and one gram can release 600 calories, so that is huge. It's, 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 a, it's an explosion of energy. There's an explosion of heat. And thousands of, and, and someone asked me, uh, how, what is the amount of energy that is released in cyclone? There have been a lot of calculations made scientifically. So uh, just as a metaphor I'm using, it's equivalent to thousands and thousands of Hiroshima explosions. Yes, it sounds very fascinating. Yes, there are around the, the amount of uh, energy that is released in a cyclone is equal to thousands and thousands of explosions. There have been there have been calculations which say that around ten thousand uh, Hiroshima explosions. The only difference is that the energy is released periodically. Energy is released. Uh, it is there, there, there. There's no once one time explosion of energy spontaneous explosion of energy but gradual release of energy so and, and i always those who still have confusion just calculate the amount of water that is collected that is that is carried by a cyclone and multiply it by 600 calories all your doubts will be clear the amount of energy that is released now the question is why am i putting so much of emphasis on this on this latent heat of condensation. If this is clear. So, so the reason why the emphasis should be made on this latent heat of condensation. See, water vapors are released, they possess this latent heat of condensation, uh, energy evaporation, they release this condensation. Now the heat that is released by the vapor, we know that heat gets converted into higher kinetic energy. So the latent heat of condensation gets translated into higher kinetic energy of air particles. So the latent heat of condensation gets translated into higher kinetic energy of air. Kinetic energy means movement, speed. So what makes cyclones so strong is this release of latent heat of condensation. So I read the statement, excellent statement. It can be asked as a, as a question also. That tropical cyclones or uh, tropical cyclones originate due to atmospheric pressure difference. But maintained by the release of latent heat of condensation. It is the reason for the so much of energy that cyclones carry towards the sea. Uh, beg your pardon, towards the continents. So this is how cyclones originate and become so strong. I'll repeat again, temperature increases, low pressure, air masses rise up, create the high pressure zone, there's a subsidence of air, which makes it little more stable and clear skies. Also in the adjoining areas, because the condensation is taking place, there's a lot of swell of air that is produced because of Coriolis force, rising air masses, plus, the condensation, the latent heat of condensation that is released is making the cyclone stronger and stronger and stronger. So, this means if cyclone spends more time on oceans or sea surfaces, they are going to get stronger and stronger because they will absorb more vapors and so on. There are categories of cyclone. Uh, which is called as the rarest of the rare cyclone. Sometimes when they, once they make a landfall, they turn back towards the oceans again and absorb more moisture and get stronger. So this is about a little bit about origin of cyclone. Now in the very next discussion, next video, uh, we will be discussing upon two things. Number one, the regions where cyclones originate and hurricanes and so on. Naming of the cyclones, 